Welcome to Longevity Now, Longevity Now FL, uh, your go-to channel for unlocking the best signs to a longer, healthier life. As always, I'm Professor Luigi Fontana, the Scientific Director of the Charles Perkins Center RPA Clinic uh, and a Clinical Academic in the Department of Endocrinology of the Royal Prince Alfred Hospital in Sydney. Today we are exploring some new fascinating findings that connect your dietary choices, yes, your dietary choices with the risk of developing infections through the influence of the gut microbiome. In a groundbreaking study just published in Science, Professor Foster and team from Oxford University explore the complex world of the human gut microbiota and its role in protecting against bacterial pathogens. Yes, in protecting against infection from bacteria. The gut microbiota, as you probably know, consisting of a diverse bacterial species, provides colonization resistance a key defensive mechanism against human against harmful, harmful pathogens. In this study, unveiling a key revelation, uh, the researchers illuminated that colonization resistance, so the resistance against the colonization of bacteria of harmful bacteria, is a cumulative outcome rooted in the biodiversity of the bacteria communities. So the more the bacteria uh, uh, biodiversity, the gut microbiota biodiversity, the more the resistance to colonization. In particular, they found that specific key species such as Escherichia coli were identified as playing indispensable roles in this collective defense mechanism. The research, this research underscores a clear correlation. Increased biodiversity corresponds to enhanced protection against infectious diseases. Let me repeat this one. Increased biodiversity corresponds to enhanced protection against infectious diseases. I will tell you in a second how you can increase your uh, gut microbiome biodiversity. So let me just mm, summarize some of the studies of this interesting new study in science. The researchers uh, conducted experiments in vitro and in vivo demonstrating that a well-composed, diverse microbiota can collectively consume the nutrients. Yes, they can consume the nutrients required by incoming pathogens, limiting their growth and establishment in the host, in our body, in the body, okay? This colonization resistance is predictable when the symbiotic community shares similar proteins with the pathogen, enhancing protection and potential health benefits for the host. As previously mentioned, these discoveries underscore the significance of both microbiome diversity and composition in providing robust protection against pathogens. Our research featured in highly cited publication in prestigious journals like Science Cell and Cell Host Microbiome has consistently demonstrated that diet serves as a key factor in increasing biodiversity. The consumption of a diverse range of plant-based foods emerges as a key element in enhancing microbiodiversity. Less. Yes, let's see. let me repeat it. The consumption of a diverse range of plant-based foods is a crucial element factor in increasing microbiota biodiversity. 
Indeed, in one of our studies on the effects of calorie-restricted diet with optimal nutrition in humans, we found that the fecal microbiota of men and women practicing calorie restriction with optimal nutrition with a wide variety of vegetables, whole grains, beans, fish, was significantly richer and more diverse than age and sex match individuals consuming the typical Western American diet. On average, in this study, the microbiota of these people on optimal CR diets had greater phylogenetic diversity, which measures the phylogenetic branch length represented in a community, more OTUs detected, and greater Shannon's diversity indexes and Pilio's Evness indexes. This increased taxonomic diversity and richness observed in these people practicing calorie restriction with optimal nutrition. They were not just eating half hamburger, half a uh, pack of French fries and half soda, but they were eating a very diverse, very rich in plant-based food with fish and some meat. Uh, compared to the people eating the typical American diet, is consistent with the results of previous studies reporting that the gut microbiome with low gene content, with low biodiversity, are associated with lower consumption of vegetables and fruits. Mechanistic data, moreover, mechanistic data revealed that bacteria thriving on high fiber diets produce essential microbial metabolites like the short chain fatty acids that are key in shaping the immune system, in reducing inflammation, and in preventing allergic and autoimmune diseases like type 1 diabetes, multiple sclerosis, Crohn's disease, also at colitis, and, and many other ones. It to, for, for today is everything. You know, I think, you know, these are very interesting data with huge implication. And um, uh, stay tuned for more insights into the fascinating world of the human microbiota and its impact on our health. Uh, this is uh, uh, Longevity Now, Longevity Now FL. I'm Luigi Fontana, professor of medicine, uh, the Le Leonard P. Ullman Chair, Picasso Chair in Translational Metabolic Health, and the scientific director of the Charles Perkins Center RPA Clinic and director of the Health for Life program of the University of Sydney and a clinical academic of the Department of Endocrinology at the Royal Prince Alfred Hospital in Sydney. Thank you for listening as always.